hi friends now we are going to be discussing a very important topic which is how to interpret the chest x ray so we are going to be talking about a pattern based approach so any time we look at an opacity on a chest x ray we have to classify it according to the pattern that we are seeing so the broad classification that we are going to be discussing is one whether it is an air space opacity or is it an interstitial opacity so this is the broad heading that we have to first classify air space opacity pathologically means anatomically means that the alveoli are affected so either in an air space opacity the alveoli are filled with something resulting in their distension which we label as a consolidation or there may be volume loss the alveoli are opaque because there is no air which will result in a volume loss so an opacity of the air space could either be alveolar distension by substances or alveolar collapse that is our first heading alveolar opacity air space opacity which is consolidation versus collapse how to do that we shall discuss then when we talk about the other aspect which is the interstitium so now in the interstitium we have various things we have the pulmonary veins we have the connective tissue we have the lymphatics so now the rest of the opacities are going to be linear reticular reticular nodular which are your lines they are not going to be confluent opacities so in a reticular reticular nodular opacities we are basically talking about the interstitium that's our pathology that's our anatomy there all right so this is how we are going to be discussing and in between we have nodules so what comes in between are these nodular opacities big nodules which if they are less than 3 cm we say nodules more than 3 cm we say mass right so these are the three headings under which we are going to be discussing the pattern based approach so again the diagrammatic representation of what i was talking about so if there is an airway abnormality if there is distension we call it consolidation if there is volume loss resulting in opacity that's atelectasis when it's a linear opacity that's our interstitial opacity and if it's a rounded lesion depending on the size it is either a nodule or a mass right so this is what we have to center around let's begin with the air space opacity so whenever we have an air space opacity how you are going to describe so we have already talked about the preliminary aspect of how you are going to pick up a chest x ray and you are going to start first talking about the patient demographics you are going to talk about the clinical history then you talk about any prior imaging if present and then you talk first about the technical parameters we remember rip rip so rotated x if present inspiratory effort and penetration so these are the first things that you will describe on a chest x ray then we come to the abnormality so let's say we are seeing this opacity so how you have to begin your description in your mind you know it's an air space opacity that you have already interpret but when you begin your description you can't just say that there's an air space opacity we are going to begin describing it as an ill defined homogeneous opacity all right so this is how you begin that it is ill defined so it's not a nodule or a mass and it is homogeneous all right so these are our initial words then you have three further classifications in the opacity so i have jotted everything down for you that you need to remember and this is going to be your interpretation don't begin with it when you are describing so what you say is an ill defined homogeneous opacity which is either linear patchy or confluent so let's discuss further so look at this particular x ray here you can see that there are these opacities which are ill defined which are homogeneous but these are linear opacities right so these are your linear air space opacities these could be basal atelectasis this could be a basal consolidation which is present mostly in smokers elderly patient you have these basal atelectatic opacity so this is your linear opacity then when we look here this is our patchy opacities you know you can see that there are multifocal opacities that i'm showing you in the schematic as well so there are these patchy alveolar air space opacities here it is something which you see very typically in a bronco pneumonia kind of a setting right so you think in terms of bronco pneumonia 
and finally the most typical one here which is your confluent opacity so linear patchy slash confluent where you have these multifocal confluent opacities in this case you can see here in the right upper zone so i further divide it depending on the pattern of linear patchy confluent if you see the air bronchogram which is nothing but the black bronchi coursing through the opacity you can comment on it that is the air bronchogram sign which further tells you that it's indeed a consolidation that we are talking about so this is how you describe an airspace opacity when we are talking in the lines of a consolidation so ill-defined homogeneous opacity which may be linear patchy or confluent with air bronchogram sign so when you see all this the examiner will ask you what is your impression so you say it's likely to be an airspace opacity it's likely to be a consolidation now comes the clinical history so depending on the content what could be the diagnosis of a consolidation consolidation is a radiological finding what is the clinical diagnosis so the differentials will depend on this so this is how you remember the differentials what is the content of the alveolar filling is what we have to talk about so is water a content of the consolidation we call it pulmonary edema Pulmonary edema can be cardiogenic because of heart failure, there is congestion or it could be non-cardiogenic which we call as ARDS. Yeah, so pulmonary edema is our first differential, cardiogenic versus non-cardiogenic. If there is pus present, we call it a pneumonia, right? So if there is pus, it's a pneumonia, could be an infective pneumonia, a lobar pneumonia, most commonly bacterial or bronchopneumonia, or it could be because of aspiration. So second differential, pneumonia. Third differential of a confluent airspace opacity which resulting in consolidation is blood being the content. So, there can be DPH. DPH meaning diffuse parenchymal hemorrhage. So, some people call it alveolar hemorrhage. Some people call it DPH. So, DAH or DPH diffuse parenchymal slash diffuse alveolar hemorrhage. The other possibility in context of trauma could be a pulmonary contusion presenting as consolidation. Then if there are cells within the alveoli, so the biggest differential is bronchoalveolar carcinoma. So remember, it's the only malignancy which is going to present as a consolidation, all right? So bronchoalveolar carcinoma and the other malignancy which can present as a consolidation is a lymphoma, all right? So bronchoalveolar carcinoma, lymphoma, other DDs of, of you know, cellular consolidations could be eosinophilic pneumonia. Then you have to think in terms of organizing pneumonia, yeah. So eosinophilic pneumonia, organizing pneumonia, OP. It could be sarcoidosis which can rarely present with a consolidation, right. Then there could be a pulmonary infarct because of a pulmonary embolism or rarely it could be a sequestration. Here the location is crucial. Most commonly this will be in the basal lobes. Left lower lobe is the most common site. On the CT we are going to be seeing a feeding vessel. We are going to be seeing that it is getting systemic supply from a branch of aorta. Right. So these are the different DDs that you have to keep in terms of a consolidation in mind. On the basis of distribution, I can further narrow down my differentials and on the basis of the history whether acute or chronic I can further narrow down my differentials so what will be the acute presentations here so as you can see you know we are gonna have pulmonary edema cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic both presenting in an acute setting pneumonia infective aspiration is going to be an acute setting DPH is acute setting contusion is an acute setting the other ones that I have highlighted yellow so a mass lesion eosinophilic pneumonia, organizing pneumonia, sarcoidosis, a sequestration, these are all going to be chronic etiologies, whereas again an infarct is going to be acute presentation. So, I have given you a color coding here, the ones in green are acute, the ones in yellow are chronic. So, depending on the presentation, we can further narrow down our differentials. On the basis of the distribution, how can I narrow down my differentials? So, if it is a predominantly central 
pattern of consolidation multifocal consolidations which are peri hyalur slash, slash central what do i think of in such cases the first consideration would be a cardiogenic pulmonary edema yeah so alveolar opacification because of cardiogenic pulmonary edema in context of infections think of pcp yeah pneumocystis cerevocae or pneumocystis carinae especially if you have history of hiv aids this is something that you have to keep into consideration viral pneumonias will frequently be central so perihyalur central consolidations these are your differentials if it is peripheral consolidations then you think in terms of non cardiogenic pulmonary edema or ards like in this case multifocal confluent air space opacities it's ards you have to consider second would be bronco alveolar carcinoma which is usually peripheral even eosinophilic pneumonia is usually peripheral and so is organizing pneumonia so our category of these lesions are typically oriented in the periphery it will present as multifocal peripheral consolidations right so this is our pattern of consolidation the other air space opacity is going to be collapse right